Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. So today's topic is Solaris. It's probably my favorite context of them all. Great for scene management and of course rendering with Karma. Today we'll see together how to create a custom template with camera, lights and whatever. So you can just reuse it every single time in your scenes. So let's open Udini and let's start. So here I am in Houdini, and I'm actually in Houdini 21 that was just released a few days ago. Lots of interesting features, by the way. I'm already preparing new content for you guys. As you can see, we are in OBJ, and the first thing I will do is just creating a Geonode, and inside I will create a Tommy. Now, this will be useful for me later because I want to show you how to import a sub geometry into Solaris. So for now, we can just forget about this. I will go out and I will press N. N is a very useful hotkey, and it lets me select which context I want to choose. In this case, I want to go to Solaris, also referred as Stage, and it says LOPS. Let me tell you why. So LOPS stands for Layout Operators. So this context, again, is for scene management of like lots of assets organization, lighting, shading, and rendering. Now that we are in Solaris, we need to understand exactly what it is and why it was created. So to start our story, we need to define what is UST. So before UST, when you had to export something from a software and then import into another software, you will probably use Alembic or OBJ or FBX. There are so many file formats out there, and some of them are specific for, I don't know, cameras and lightings. Other ones are specific for geometry, but they can carry materials. Some of them cannot. So it was a very big headache, especially in the context of a studio where the process of passing data from one studio to another one, also called ingesting, was very time consuming. So that's why Pixar said, let's create one file format to rule them all. Now Pixar guys will probably say that USD is not just a file format, it's a whole ecosystem. And you can find more details for the documentation in the link in the description. Okay, now we defined USD, but what is the correlation between Solaris and USD? Well, it looks like ZFX understood the potential of this file format and created a whole context around this idea. So Solaris is made to work specifically with USD. So we can continue with Udini. And the first thing you will do after going into Solaris is just change your workspace to Solaris. This is important, especially for the appearance of this panel over here. But anyway, I have a custom workspace. So for now, I will proceed with that. Let's actually start by creating a primitive. You will notice that your geometry spreadsheet is now being converted to something else. And here we have something that we could define easily as an outliner. So this node allows us to create some groups that we can later fill with some geometry. So for instance, I would like to have some groups in my outliner and I would like to have them as shot that's my main folder and inside I would like to put a geo folder so then I can just copy this a bunch of time as I want to create different folders for my lighting for instance so here I can just write LGT material MTL and cameras so just cam as you can see now we have a nice structure these are not groups these are X forms and different kind of primitive to define them as a group we should go here into primitive kind and say that they are groups you will notice that this icon will change and now these are what we usually consider as group and we can now proceed there are different ways to create geometry in solaris the first one will be just a simple sop create this allows you to go inside and access sops so here you could create your modeling operations scattering or whatever so let's actually simulate that with a simple peak head i will just remove the shader for now and i can add a smooth node just quickly to show that actually i am in sops and i can do every classic sop operation yeah this <laughs> looks amazing so let's go out and as you can see it's already correctly imported the only thing we need to do in this soft create is of course specify where we want to save it in the outliner so in this case i can go back to my primitive and choose shot geo and just paste in before the dollar s as i want to save all of this into shot geo but i want to be named as the node so as you can see now we go into geo and we find the soft create that inside has a mesh so this soft can easily be called pig head and to be more precise let's name it pig head component for now if we open that we see that our pig is still called mesh zero and that's not the best especially if you want to keep everything organized so let's see how to rename this one we can go inside and we can create a name attribute the name attribute should be taught as the way to give this geometry an identity so instead of be called mesh zero it will be called whatever you write over here so pig geo we can now go out and you'll see that your geometry is called pig geo something else to keep in mind what if you are editing your name but you just forget to pin this one as view and you're just viewing this smooth let's go out and you will see that your mesh will not be renamed that's because the soft create is reading up until this point it's just forgetting about the name so what i tend to do here is always create an output node the reason being this output node it doesn't matter what i visualize maybe i visualize this one it will always export the output if you check going out i will see my mesh is being smooth and my geometry is 
being called big geo. So never forget of adding this output, it's very useful. Okay, let's see another way to import geometry. Maybe you just prefer starting in SOPs. And so in that case, you can use a SOP import. So as this example that we did before in SOPs, I just created a Tommy before, I can now import that Tommy. So I can go into my SOP import, connect it into my primitive. And as you can see, it's looking for a SOP path. So control and clicking on this icon and then OBJ and Geo1 is perfectly fine. And here is our Tommy. So with SOP import and also other nodes, you will still see this icon appearing. This is a warning, it's not so important. What it's saying is that you need to save your scene. Control S, it disappears. So again, let's give an identity to this one too. I want this one to be my Tommy component. If I want to give a name attribute, I can definitely go into SOPs and name, this will be my Tommy. And now I can define the import path prefix of being basically shot geo slash Tommy component. And as you can see, under my geo, I have my Tommy component and my geometry has been named Tommy thanks to the name attribute. Now at this point, I could just merge these two. I could just create a merge and connect all of them here. Now, although this works, it's not definitely the best way. And that's for a concept that we'll talk a little bit better in the next classes and that's layers. So for now, the preferred way of doing that is just putting one after the other one, sort of like cascading. And as you can see, they will be just added to the main outliner. At this point, I could definitely go here and press enter in the viewport so I can transform my big head so they don't really intersect. And just for you to know, there are possibilities to add geometry directly here. If it's like a grid, for instance, a very simple geometry, as you can see under the hood, it's a sub create with a grid sub inside, but it's a very fast way to just add a grid over here. Okay, now you know how to deal with geometry in Solaris. Let's actually add some cameras. So I'll create a camera. Never forget that the path will not be correct. As you see, the camera is just outside of our hierarchy and also the grid, by the way. So let's fix the grid first. Let's go shot geo dollar s. For the camera, I will just go back to my primitive node, copy my shot cam over here and just change it here where it says primitive path. Now, by selecting my camera, I can check that it's in the correct position and I can proceed. To pilot your camera, the fastest way is just to drag it in the viewport. Then you need to lock it. So you are basically anchored to the camera and now you can just pilot it. So let's find something a little bit more interesting, something like that I think is perfectly fine. And before moving again, let's just disable this one so we will not move the camera. So now the camera is staying into position. So now that we have a camera, we can still access it from here. You see, you can just select shot camera one and that's it. At this point, you want to learn how to assign materials. So let's create what is called material library. This is just not a material node. If you go inside, I will start from a karma material builder, KMB, just to be faster. I will name this one Tommy and I will duplicate it a bunch of time. This will be my grid and this will be my big head. Now, if I go inside for now, I will just like to change the color to something random. So the Tommy will be orange. The grid will be a darker gray and the pig head, of course, will be just pink. So now the materials have been created, but they are not assigned to the geometry. So instead of just filling my materials, I will just go into auto fill materials. As you can see, the material library has found those materials and we just need to assign to the geometry. So for the Tommy, I will just click on this arrow and I can select my Tommy into the viewport and press enter. Same logic with the grid. I can go here, then go into the viewport viewport and press enter. And lastly, I want to show you another way that you can do that. If you want to assign it without going to the viewport, I can just find my pig head component, for instance, and I can drag and drop it here and that will have exactly the same effect. It's now time for some lighting. So for lighting, I always suggest to use the Karma Physical Sky. It's very quick and dirty, but like it just gives you like a nice sky and nice realistic lighting. Go into my camera and let's create some render settings. So I'll create a Karma node. As you can see, when you look for Karma, it says setup. And that's because when you create it, it's actually two different nodes. So that is great. Now the camera render settings is where we will define our render settings. I want to render also using the GPU. So I'll choose XPU. I can define a resolution and I also need to define a camera. So the best way to do that is just going here, control click here and just going to find our thing. So camera and camera. So our camera is now being assigned correctly. And now the camera render settings is not complaining. Again, just for the sake of being tidy, let's also put our camera physical sky in the right position. So to the primitive, I'm just copy the shot slash lights and I want to do the same of course also with the material library so I want to save my materials into shot slash mtl and I want to add an extra slash to say just put the name or whatever material you want to add now if you go to the last node probably and you check your outliner you will see that everything is tidy now I know this could be boring I know this takes some times but again that's why we are creating something like a template that you can just reuse it every single time at this point everything is done and we can check our renders by going here and just 
just choosing Karma experience. We have some extra things here in the render. We have, for instance, an outliner. This is for the selection. You see, technically I should be able to change it, but it's not updating. If they bother you, you can disable the lights one clicking on this icon and you can disable the selection clicking on this icon. And as you can see, we have our first render in Solaris. What if we want to export it? So let's just go to Houdini Vulkan again. We can choose where we want to save it. So a location on our computer. For now, I will leave dollar hip render. Dollar hip name is fine. I don't want to call it as the node. So I will call it my render. And I don't want to export an XR as I would like to be able to preview it very fast. So let me export a PNG. So we can now go into USD render rock. And we can notice that some of these parameters are being referenced from the camera render settings. And that's the reason why I'm not creating these two nodes separately, but I'm creating that with a single Karma setup. At this point, I can click render to disk. So this is a basic Solaris workflow. We can do way more advanced things, but for now, I would like to convert this to a template that you can use every single time. So the paths are already being assigned. So that's the most important thing. But I don't want to create any specific geometry. I will leave that to you, of course. That would be a template. In the materials, I will go inside and delete all of this. Also, I will delete all the material assignments. I personally don't like to put a grid. I will name this my component and I will just remove anything from here. I will still leave the output node just to remind myself that I have to create everything below the output. And I will delete the Tommy. Now to save all of this, just go here and choose new shelf tab. You will be prompted to add a name, press apply and accept. You will have it. I will select all of this and just drag and drop it here. Now this is creating a custom script. I can just name this one basic template and just copy paste it down into the label. There there are different kind of icons. For now, let's leave it as generic. The input node should be the stage primitive and the output node should be the USD render rock one. Now we can accept. And that means that every single time I can click here and that will create me the custom setup over here. So let's see how to create a custom hotkey so that you can just press something like Q, let's say, and recall all of this. So go in here into the tool and press in right click, edit tool into hotkeys. We can choose network pane. Here we can add a new shortcut. I will press plus this icon that I have close to the number one. So I can just press apply and accept, apply and accept again. And now you can see, I can just press that and I will have it every single time. So we're trying to build powerful workflows with Solaris. Keep in mind that this will work like 80% of the times, but it's still very basic. In the next classes, we'll see how to leverage the component builders and so many things. So I really hope you're excited for these classes. If you like the video, please drop a like, subscribe and follow me. And I will see you next week with a new Solaris video. Thanks for staying with me. Cheers.